ball. Let's import the file. This is the video that is going to be the first clip. Drag and drop it onto the timeline. Now we need to have the logo here, so let's import the logo PNG here. It's a transparent logo PNG. Drag and drop it onto the timeline as well. Let's scale down the logo a bit. This looks good now. Let's adjust its position, whether it should be on the top or at the center. I think top is good. Now, select the video, and let's first adjust it by adding a scale animation. Click on the stopwatch next to the scale property. Move a few frames forward and add a blank keyframe. Then, go to the last frame and zoom in the video. Let's see. Yes, this looks good now. Alright, now let's trim the rest of the video. Let's render it. Select all. Go to sequence, and render selection. Now that it's rendered, let's see how it looks. Good. Now, import the next video. Open it and drag it onto the timeline. Let's trim the beginning, removing the first few seconds. Trim it and play it. Now, let's trim out this part as well. We only need this section here. Great. Now, let's duplicate this pizza layer. To do so, press Alt, select it, then press Alt and drag it to the right. Next, right-click the duplicated video layer, go to Speed, Duration, and select Reverse Speed. OK. This will reverse the speed of the duplicated video. Let's review the whole video. At this point, I believe we should trim out this starting point as well. So, let's crop it and delete it. This looks good now. Let's render it to ensure smooth playback. Go to Sequence, Render Selection. Now that it's rendered, let's play it to see how the reversed video looks. Let's trim the last part of the duplicated video as well, the last few seconds of it. OK, now we'll import the next video. Right click, import, and now I'll select this video. Open it and drag and drop it onto the timeline. It's a very large video, bigger than our frame, so let's scale it to 50%. It was double the frame size, so reducing it to 50% fits it perfectly here. Let's render it as well. OK, after rendering it, let's see how it looks. We only need that part of the video where the noodles are being picked up with chopsticks, so delete the first few seconds of it. Delete these seconds as well. We only need this part, so let's trim the rest of the frame as well. Crop it and then delete. Let's import the last video here.
We need the noodles video to have the same colors as this one. Ensure that your frame is selected on the noodles video. Then, navigate to window and select Lumetri color. I already have Lumetri color open. Go to color wheels and match. Here, I'll expand this panel a bit for better visibility. Then, click on the comparison view option. In the reference panel, select the video from which you want to take the colors. Click on the apply match option here. Now, the colors will be applied to it as well. Now, we have this last video here. We need to trim the video from the point where the two glasses have exited the frame. Trim it at that point. Then, at the last frame where the two glasses have left the frame, we will apply a blur effect. So, go to effects and search for Gaussian blur. Drag and drop it onto this last video layer. In the effects control panel, you'll find the blurriness value. Increase it. I'll increase it to 62%. Also, duplicate the logo layer by pressing Alt plus Command on your keyboard and dragging it onto the last video. Let's adjust its position to make it centered like this. OK. I think this looks good now. Next, select the first video, which is when the wine glasses are touching each other. We will apply a stop motion effect to it. In effects, search for posterize time. Drag and drop it onto this video layer. Scroll down in the effects control panel, and you'll see the frame rate. The frame rate is 24. Let's change it to 5 here. Let's render this whole sequence first. We're rendering it to get rid of all the glitches while we view the videos. Let's see the whole video. We just need to add the text on top of this video. So, first, go to the noodles video. Press T for text, and click here to paste your text. Highlight your text and go to text options. Here, you can change the font and size of the text or make any other adjustments you want. I think this font looks good. Let's zoom in to adjust the text placement. Let's make it 70%. Let's see how it looks. It looks good. Now, duplicate this text layer and place it onto both pizza layers. Then, replace the text with the text of your choice and adjust its position. Let's make this text layer bigger so that it covers both the original and reversed pizza layers. And yes, you're done. Your video is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please comment, like, and support by subscribing to my channel.